screencast was created to help you work with the TI Inspire CX along with Kirk Weiler's eMath Instruction Algebra 1 Unit 8 Lesson 3 and Exercise 2 and this should apply to the lesson. Again we're going to get into some of the differences and quirks. Uh, nothing majorly different but just to make sure we've got it covered. Okay, let's go. Consider exercise two. They're considered the basic quadratic function of f of x equals x squared and the more complex quadratic function g of x equals the difference of x minus two squared mi minus four. The graph of f of x is shown on the grid already. Using your calculator to generate a table, sketch a graph of g. All right. Let's get right over there. Now, um, to get to a table, we need to make a graph. So there we are. And uh, we're just going to type in the function. So let's put in the parentheses, x minus 2, close those parentheses, minus 4, enter. And so, something's wrong. So we're going to edit that. And I see that I somehow missed uh, something here, so we'll just put in the parentheses here, the parentheses here, and my squared here. That's what I missed. Okay, we'll regraph that now, and it should look more like a parabola. Good, there we go. All right, now let's go and look at the table here. And again, to get to a table, very simply, it's the split screen here. And uh, we notice that the table starts with the value 1. There's a little fluke with uh, this software on the desktop, and the iPad does the same thing. It really should be starting at 0. It starts at 1. Uh, the handheld works as it should. It would start at 0. But we want to change that, because if we look at our graph, we have a range uh, or a domain of uh, n range of s negative 6 to 6. So how do we do that? Okay, well, we'll just go to our table, edit table settings, and I could go to negative 6. Now, I want to point out that <laughs> for some fluke in the software on the computer and the iPad, it's actually going to display 5. So if you wanted to correct for that, uh, you would just adjust your number. Uh, it's not a big deal uh, on the handhold, handheld, rather, it behaves as it should. And as I predicted, it starts with the 5, so we can just go and hit that. Okay, and then we can graph these values on our chart. Okay, How, let's go to B. How would you need to shift the graph of f of x to get to the graph of g of x? Well, I'm going to now kind of undistort this, and we're going to hide that table. So we're going to go to Menu. And of course, we use those values, right? Those ordered pairs to create our uh, create our graph. And what would we have to do? Well, let's go and make a grid here to maybe make this a little bit easier to discern. Grid and line grid, and there we go. What did we have to do? Well, we have to sh we had to shift down four and two to the right. Now, that's interesting, because if we look at the values here, you see that the down 4 is reflected in this negative 4, or minus 4 right here. And that 2, it's now 2. You notice that it's reversed? It's actually positive 2. Uh, this is a particular form of, uh, ex of writing this expression that actually will give you some information about what the minimum or maximum is. So you'll learn a little bit later that this becomes a positive 2, the opposite. And if it was, a, if it was x plus 2, it would be negative 2. So this gives us our turning point, and you can see it right there in the function. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Just wanted to show you the root form, which is the form that we have it in here, uh, this expression, and how to manip manipulate the tables. Be aware that the software on the computer and the software on the iPad are just don't quite operate the way they should, but this is fine for the handheld.